So has Games Workshop decided that they want less aircraft dotting the skies above the battlefields of Warhammer 40k? Let's talk about the recent rules update that changes the way that flyers work, for the most part gives a big nerf to aircraft, though there might be at least one winner. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, and today I thought we'd take a focused look at flyers and aircraft, one of the major core rules changes from the Arcs of Omen update, and perhaps one of the biggest and harshest nerfs of the entire update. I'd argue that this does seem more punitive than a bunch of the points changes that they came out with, even the harsh ones. Let's talk about flyers in 40k, what rules changed and why they did it, and what that means for the various flyers out there, bombers, transport planes and gunships. So since 9th edition came out, flyers have been in a bit of a mixed bag. At the start of the edition, almost none of the flyers were really worth the points in my opinion, though as each codex has come out, Games Workshop has tended to cost them just a little bit more competitively. I'd say for top flyers in the game at the moment, things like the Sunshark and the Harpy for the Tower and the Tyranids were common competitive staples. The nice mortal wound bombing rule, plus some fairly hefty guns. For the Orcs, I'd say the Wasp Bomb Blaster Jet was pretty standout as well. The sheer amount of damage D3 plus 3 that that puts out is pretty scary, particularly in freebooters. And there were plenty of other planes out there that were just kind of okay. The Drukhari ones, the Necron Scythes, and the Dark Talons of the Dark Angels. All of those I would have described as usable but not standout. Though some aircraft are just flat out bad, the Space Marine Flyers for the most part have just been overcosted since the edition came out by fairly crazy amounts. In the previous balance data slate, Games Workshop decided to limit the amount of planes that you can field in a 2000 point game just to two planes. This was mainly to fix issues with the Orcs and the Admech at the time, who'd often be spamming six odd flyers and just throwing them at the enemy, alpha striking huge chunks of their army off the board. And while it perhaps feels like a bit of a band-aid patch, it does quite well in making sure that certain armies aren't just completely dominated by flyers. Whenever that happens, the gaming experience just generally doesn't tend to be that great. A fairly simple game of can you kill all these crazy flyers before they kill you. I feel like that rule was kind of functional enough. Though I feel like perhaps they could have given the Guard Tempestus Scions a bit of an exception to it. The Valkyries aren't exactly the craziest damage dealers out there. And it does mean that Guard Air Cavalry isn't just bad, it's unplayable at least outside of match play games where the balanced data slate is generally in effect. Overall, it meant that armies either took one flyer, two flyers or none, generally meaning that they wouldn't absolutely dominate an army and cause huge problems for the game, but that doesn't mean that there weren't efficient ones like the Harpies or the Sun Sharks. Now, on the Arcs of Omen balanced data slate, Games Workshop have made three further changes to flyers. First up, making the flyer limits a bit more flexible, one for incursion or below, two for strike force, and three for onslaught. Maybe a bit more sensible to make it scale with the game size, no real complaints there. But then there's a nerf to bombers, meaning that you can't just fly straight off the board and drop bombs as you go, something that was at least fairly common to deal some damage to some fragile one-wound infantry hiding out of line of sight. I'm not sure if that was the worst change in the world, to be honest. At least it means that if you're bombing things, you've got to stay around and have the enemy have a go at to try and kill you back and face the consequences. And I feel like that alone would have been a fair enough nerf to make them a little bit less overbearing. The really brutal one, though, is that now they've basically said that any flyer in the game must start the board off the board in strategic reserve turn 1, and it basically means that flyers are no longer going to be able to be used for alpha strikes. Often the way would be, with your two flyers, you'd have them on the board, probably deploy them really far back so the enemy can't hit them except with really long-ranged guns turn 1, then zoom them over and hopefully get some line of sight on things you wouldn't normally be able to, and deal some early damage before likely being shot down or attacked in return. By meaning that they've got to be off the board, it means they basically have to be a bit more of a beta strike sort of thing. You probably want to have them come down turn 2, they'd have to set up anywhere on the board that's greater than 9 inches away from the enemies, so you would be able to guarantee a turn of shooting, but it really is a big nerf to get all that damage not on turn 1, but on turn 2 instead, particularly as flyers often pay a premium for the damage output that they have due to their speed. In general though, I feel like if Games Workshop really wanted to stop people playing bombers as much, then they've probably succeeded. The way that the rules shake out for them, it means that not only will they not be able to bomb things on turn 1, but they also won't be able to bomb things on turn 2 either, as they'll just have set up on the board, so it won't have counted as moving over anything. It means on turn 2 they could come down and only shoot, not unleash any of their mortal wound explosive cargo, and then presuming they survive any enemy counter-attacks, the first time they actually get to drop bombs is turn 3, and that's fairly late in the game, your opponent might have had 3 full turns of damage dealing prior to that. All over, and particularly combined with that nerf about not flying off the board to drop bombs, bombers have just got enormously less good. You could have been getting bombs on turn 1 and turn 2, 
usually dealing around about 3 to 5 mortal wounds depending on your targets. I feel like as a result, units like Sun Sharks, Harpies, and other bomber units just really won't be played anywhere near as much now. I'm personally not 100% sure that this was necessarily the way to go. I feel like you could probably have just addressed it with points costs and things. The Sun Shark and the Harpy were doing their job rather well. But it's not like the people playing them weren't paying for the privilege with their points. If the Games Workshop felt that they wanted them to be a bit more of a take or leave option, I feel like they could have done that just by increasing the points a bit. Maybe a points nerf plus the change to bombers not flying off the board with mortal wounds, I feel like it might have been enough. Otherwise though, I feel like anything that's paying for mortal wound bombs and things is just now not going to be worth it with these balanced data slate changes. And that does hit a bunch of other things like say the Drukhari Void Raven or the Admech Fuselav. Not dreadful units, but also not particularly standout either. For the other classes of flyers, I feel like the shooting flyers will probably be a lot more standout than the bombers now, as when they actually come in turn 2 for their beta strike, it does mean that they at least get their full damage output and are missing out on one of their main special rules on that turn. I feel like Necron Doom Scythes, the Orc Wasbomb planes and the Dark Angels planes all remain playable, though this definitely is a nerf to them, you won't have the option of starting on the board in the matchups where it made sense, games where the opponent might not have long range heavy weapon fire to be able to shoot them down with. I guess the game plan with these things is that you drop down turn 2, shoot some damage off against something with a good line of sight, and then for the rest of the game zoom around and actually get to use their good movements, and get lines of sight on things, maybe jump next to characters and stuff, and be a big disruptive threat. I feel like these guys might be a bit more squeezed than some people might imagine though, they will be competing against strategic reserves for any ground based units as well, which often have far better damage output for the points cost compared with flyers. Flyers with strategic reserve will have a positioning advantage, they can drop anywhere on the board, but I feel like they might gain a little bit less from big positioning compared with the strategic reserve units turning off on the sides of the board, maybe with a whole bunch of powerful heavy weapons, say for example some orc mech guns turning up from reserve, and that helps get around their very low movement and get them a almost guaranteed good line of sight with some very good damage output for the cost. Overall I'd say the better shooting flyers aren't unusable, but they're going to be a lot more niche, and you certainly don't want to put too many points in reserve that won't be contributing turn 1, as in a 5 turn game you often need to be getting in damage as soon as you can. Otherwise for the third class of flyers we've got transport flyers, maybe a little bit more niche throughout the different armies, I feel like the guard valkyrie comes off pretty badly out of this. The way it is currently, and I believe what it's costed for, it can be a bit of a premium alpha strike unit, you have it on the board then you make a normal move and you put in the troops with grav shoot insertion to get to the front line to turn 1. Now though if you've got to put it in strategic reserve it'll turn up turn 2 and it can't use that grav shoot insertion as it hasn't made a normal move. Overall this just seems like a unit that's been caught in the crosshairs of a nerf that was designed to affect something else which is one of the reasons why I feel that points cost might have been better to address it. Valkyries really weren't unbalanced in any way, but they've had an absolutely enormous nerf to their abilities that you pay for in the points. The Admet Transvector arguably got a small buff, that one's got a rule that allows you to break the normal reserve rules and come in turn 1, at least that means that it'll have a bit more impact on the game and you can use it to genuinely deliver some alpha striking Skitari or something. Still though, perhaps the main issue with that though is that you pay really quite a lot of points for the flyer, and the things that it can actually deliver in that 6 model transport capacity are pretty small in threat. Things like 5 or 6 Electro Priests are probably about as good as it gets, and that isn't really all that much. I say at least on paper, if I'm understanding it right though, then the Necron Knight Scythe might actually be a surprise winner out of these changes. The Knight Scythe is kind of whatever for its own points cost, has an anti-infantry gun, and is a normal flyer move with a big transport capacity. I feel like the most interesting use of it so far though has always been that prismatic dimensional breach stratagem, a stratagem that you can only use on turn 2 anyway, and it has the ability to jump out some necrons out of your knight side from strategic reserve, and breaks the normal rules about having them have to start 9 inches away from enemy models, meaning that you could set up yourself a really short charge with say something like some Scorpec destroyers. Coming out of strategic reserve, that would mean that the knight side would have to set up 9 inches away, and the unit would have to set up within 3 inches of that, but that still boils down to getting a 6 inch charge on your enemy target, which is very very likely to succeed if you budget a command point reroll, and Arcs of Omen even saves you the command point cost of putting the unit in strategic reserve in the first place, so overall this seems a lot stronger to me. Getting a near guaranteed charge with a scary core melee unit is really quite cool, I feel like that definitely has a lot of possibilities, and could certainly be a Necron competitive staple going forward.
Finally, for transport flyers, I did notice that the Corvus Black Star seems to have done particularly badly out of all this. It did go down in points a bit, so I suppose it's a bit more efficient on the damage front, but it now has effectively a first turn protection stratagem that does absolutely nothing at all, seeing as it doesn't start on the board in the first place, and again seeing as it arrives in the reserves phase, and you won't be able to get any units out of it until the next movement phase. You can't get any units out of it until turn 3 now, effectively making it one turn slower as delivering units compared with teleporting them. The Corvus just really doesn't seem to catch much for a break throughout the additions. So anyway, let me know what you make of the flyer changes. Is this going to be a nerf that keeps your planes off the board, or would you still have some gunships and things coming on turn 2, and that's still efficient enough for the damage output that they bring? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k things coming, I do tend to post new videos just about every day. If you'd like another Arcs of Omen rules video to take a look at, I'll link my one for the reserve changes in Warhammer 40k, and a few thoughts as to how that might impact things going forward. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, which you can find linked in the video description below. Channel patrons are what keep the channel going and these videos coming, and if you are enjoying quite a bit, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get to see a fair few videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.